Hey guys, so welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this is actually going to be my first official video of 2023. My name is Lila and I've become known, um, if I don't know if you subscribed to me before or if you like have seen my shorts, but for telling crazy story ideas. So just to clarify, for this segment, this is just a story idea. This didn't happen in real life, thank God. I hope it never does. But um, this is actually going to be called the Starbucks Murder. So the the reason why I thought of this is because, I mean, I love Starbucks. I think in our society, like, who doesn't love Starbucks? Um, and if you don't, then that's fine, too. Um, but also, who doesn't love a good a murder story? Like, I love listening to, like, murder podcasts and just figuring out why people do why th what they do, you know? So this is actually going to be a story that starts in Austin, Texas. And I've said that because I love Austin, Texas, because I went to go visit last year, and it was amazing. But anyway, so this story starts in in Austin um, with a couple named David and Layla. So David and Layla are both um, in their late 20s um, and they've been married for a few years now but they've actually been together for 10 years. Um, so they met when they were in high school so they were like high school sweethearts and um, they graduated college around the same time and they moved around you know the, the city they moved around Texas throughout all of Texas um, and now they, they just came to Austin because David he's actually an accountant and he got um, a new job as an accountant um, in Austin and Layla is a recruiter she's still looking for employment but she's you know enjoying her time just in the move um setting getting their house ready so this story basically starts when Layla starts reading the news and she sees that there has actually there was actually a murder at the Starbucks right across the street from them from where they live and she's a little bit scared because this is like the first murder in that neighborhood and it, it was supposed to be like a very like chill area but like I mean, someone just got killed, and apparently the murder's M.O. This is not the first time that the this murder has killed, and their M.O. is that they throw um they throw the body into the trash bin at Starbucks specifically, and what's even gross and gruesome, so, like, viewer discretion advised, if you're gonna keep watching this, um, the guy, the murder, we don't know if it's a man or a woman, um, the murder grabs, um, he, he, gets the victim's blood and pours it into a Starbucks drink and like puts it right next to the victim um, so that they could find it like that so it's basically like the dead body in the trash bin and then you just see the Starbucks drink but like the dr it's not a drink it's like blood um, which is like super disgusting um but that's this is not the first time they've done this and the police and the media have noticed a pattern in this murder's mo which is that they always do this at a starbucks trash bin they always dump the body there and for some reason it seems like this serial killer has something like connected to starbucks like they're like it could be like someone that worked there someone that doesn't has had bad experience because for some reason they always throw their victims in the trash bin there so so Layla, being like any regular girl, any regular woman, like she is scared because she's realized that this um, serial killer actually goes for women around her age that looks similar to her. So it scares like the crap out of her because she's like, um, like, babe you know we just moved here like what is going on like I she never has heard of this news like she's never um, seen like it, it was like little by little she did hear like small little like stories of this murder but this is like the first time that the media actually like has a name for this this killing which is called the starbucks murder like the media everywhere they they put the starbucks murder that's that's the name so i think that's what grabs her attention and grabs most more, more people's attention um so she goes on with her day and like tries to you know relax and not be too scared until one day the police come into um, her house and start questioning her and she's she's finds it really strange because like i mean i could just imagine like the police out of nowhere just show up to your house and start asking you questions about this murder case that you have no idea what it's about and they actually start questioning her on david so they start asking her um if David has ever had any signs of like if he's ever cheated before if he's ever had signs of infidelity and they also ask her like if like if she knows where he was um, like two weeks ago at the time of the murder and I mean it was two weeks ago like who really remembers what they did like even yes even like two days ago like I forget so she's like I believe he was with me like my husband was with me but she doesn't really she doesn't 
really remember and she kind of gets scared and she becomes defensive in a way because like i mean if you're accusing like someone that's really close to you like you're going to become defensive because you have no idea what's going on and you know that they're innocent so that's basically what layla does like she's defensive but before she can even like defend him he's already um he's already being questioned and he's a suspect he's one of the main suspects of this investigation and the reason why is because the girl that was um, murdered actually is one of david's co-workers and they're like br brand new co-workers like they just met they just moved in like a month ago so this is one of um david's new co-workers and they found footage of david and this young woman um going to going at a restaurant to get food and david drops her off and he is actually reported to be the last one who has seen her so that's why he is the main suspect but they don't necessarily have like concrete evidence because um her body has like no dna on it like there's no no evidence um that he was the one that could have done this and there's no evidence of sexual assault um nothing so so they they just suspect him because he's the last one um but later on they find another suspect and they actually release david so layla you know once david's released she's full of questions and she feels bad for her husband because he was just he was accused guilty of this and now he has just lost his job um because even as a suspect like i feel like people see you differently and, and you've been accused and it's just it's just very it's just hard to be so trusting especially in a society like this so i think like that's why just david's very anxious so layla just tries to be you know a good wife and tries to care for him but uh, um david starts overreacting and is like we have to leave we have to move like we we can't be here anymore like they they think i'm a i'm a murderer and they've accused me and now i can't get like a job anywhere and this is the first time like layla has seen this from david like he usually every time they move because they move pretty often like i think they this is like probably like the longest they've ever been at a place was like six months so she's used to moving but she's tired of it you know after a few years you get tired of it but this time like david is very like he's like we have to leave like we can't we can't be here like like um they're they're just seeing me differently so she's a little bit like hesitant but she understands but she realizes that there's something to david that has changed like he's become very like anxious and very just um weirded out with like just the people that come in like it's like uh, it's, it's just become like over the top and she's never seen this side of david and she starts to wonder if like if this has to do with guilt like if there's more that he's not telling her um so she she starts to kind of question him you know she because even though like he's released as a suspect like he still is being under invest seen under investigation and they still haven't found a necessarily um killer for this case they haven't closed this case so it's still open and they only released him because of lack of evidence and now he's deciding that he wants to leave he wants to like get out and he always does this but it's the first time she sees that there's something up with him so she tries to figure out you know she tries to get to know more about this case and who this starbucks murder could be and what what david's link could be to that murder because even though he might not be a suspect he could know something that he's not like leading on so she starts to kind of you know become a police in her own mind so she realizes that um she starts to kind of take a pattern and starts to observe david more and his connection with starbucks and she notices that every thursday he brings her a Starbucks drink and this Thursday coming up isn't any different. He always brings her a Starbucks drink, her mocha cookie, cookie crumble because she loves that drink. He always brings her that and um, he gets something for himself. Um, and she's like, okay, well, he only goes to Starbucks like once a week. It's, it's not a big deal. Like, it's not like... I don't know. I don't. I don't really see like the connection. She knows that he worked there years ago when he was in college. He he was there for like a, a good two years, and he loves working there. He enjoyed his time there, so he doesn't. She doesn't really see like a reason why he would hate Starbucks so much. Like he's completely has a normal relationship with the business. Um, until later on, you know, a month later, she notices something very small but it's like a clue that's like in plain sight and could like not be a clue but like it is so she notices that her sticker cup 
says items one of three which sounds so like so small and so insignificant but she wonders she's like okay items one of three she's like i know he gets me an item obviously she, he gets himself a drink but he doesn't like and he doesn't like the pastries he only gets like you know just one drink and it's always like it's always two items but this is the first time that she's noticed that it's it's item one of three so that means there was another item before and she starts to wonder like who could this item like the other item belong to and it's it's a very small like very small little thing that could be going on but she starts to question it so she realizes you know what next thursday i'm gonna spy on my husband because there is something like it's just, it, I just feel weird. Like, she just feels like this kind of this gut feeling that there's something she needs to figure out. So, when Thursday comes along, she actually um, tells David that she has an interview and she leaves. And, but what she's actually going to do is she's actually going to spy on David and his pattern of that for that day. So, when she goes to, you know, to spy on him, she sees him meet up with this young girl who's probably like in her early 20s. Um, and she starts to become alarmed because she's like, is David cheating on me? Um, and she realizes that David has bought her a drink, her mocha cookie crumble that she always gets on Thursday. He buys himself a drink and he buys this woman a drink. And that could be why it says items one of three because it's three items. So, so she spies on him and she, you know, takes notes of it. She, she takes pictures because... Like, he, she just found him cheating, and she wants to, like, tell him, like, hey, or who is this woman? Like, why are you with her? Um, but then, um, later on, they find out, um, two days later, they find this body. But then, later on, the next day, this young girl is reported dead. And this young girl isn't reported dead in that Starbucks that, that she went to, that Layla went to spy David in. It's in Starbucks, um, like, 30 minutes um, away because there's so many Starbucks all over here. But it's 30 minutes away. And um, she's in the trash bin, the same M.O. that this murder always has. It's the same M.O. Um, and that's when Layla, it clicks. And she's like, I got you. I just got you like you killed you killed that young girl so David so Layla isn't only triggered that her husband possibly cheated on her but he literally murdered a person and he's been the one doing these murders all over town throwing these victims into the trash bin next to Starbucks and putting a nasty cup of blood um, right next to the victim like if he was gonna sip it or something like it's completely like this demonic and disgusting and she starts to like realize like is this really the man i've been living with for 10 years and is this really is this the reason why he always wanted to move like for for the past like five years he's always wanted to leave like right after college he's always wanted to leave and and she doesn't it's weird because she she's known this guy and she's never suspected anything off of him like yeah there are times where he has like late nights from work there there are times where he abruptly wants to move and it's kind of like strange and she doesn't like it but she's never questioned it until now because of the what the, the police came to question her about this so she goes to the police she tells them everything everything that she saw that she believes and he he he, become, he gets arrested and um they go to court and he's the one who actually ends up he's the one who did this for the past five years he's been the, the starbucks murderer um and in court they actually end up doing an, an analysis on him um so that they could figure out why why starbucks why this mo why this way and so there's actually there the backstory is that david um when he was in college he actually started having feelings with what for, for one of with one of his co-workers um he started having feelings for this woman named delia riley and this was back when Layla was at, out of town. She was at another school. And her and David and Layla didn't really see each other much. So David actually, um, they did long distance. But during that time, he actually ended up catching feelings for his coworker, Delia. And Delia didn't reciprocate these feelings because she just, she knew David had a girlfriend and she wasn't that kind of girl. And but David was like in love with Delia. It was a it was a very obsessive, different kind of love because he couldn't have her. 
So because of this, he started asking her, um, asking her out daily. He started kind of becoming very obsessive towards her. Um, very like he did a lot of her, like he was harassing her at work. He was constantly questioning her, like, why don't you go out with me? Why don't you date me? And Delia was like, because like you're with someone and because like I just don't, I don't see you that way. And David was like, I'll leave her. I'll leave my girlfriend. Like, I love you. I want to be with you. And it actually got so out of hand that he actually started stalking her. He started like sending her so many text messages where Delia finally reported this, um, reported this harassment and David got blacklisted from that. He got, he got fired. He got blacklisted and he couldn't go to any Starbucks near the area. And which makes sense to Layla. And that's because she remembered when she got back home, she, um, when she got back home from college, David was like completely like he needed to leave. He was like, we need to get out of this town. This town is so weird. And he always avoided every time they would go to Starbucks. He like avoided, he, he knew he couldn't go in. So he avoided like the whole, the whole, um, business in general. He was like, we can't go to Starbucks, like, let's go to get another coffee, like, Starbucks sucks, like, and basically that's the backstory, so, Delia actually, um, is still, she's still alive, um, and she reports on, on this harassment, so it also goes more towards the case against David, and this is a complete shock to Layla, but she's grateful that she is alive and that the Starbucks murders have ended, so she goes on with her life to, you know, she, obviously she's, it's like kind of like a big news. She becomes famous because of this and she wishes that she would have seen it sooner. But she goes on with her life and she pursues her own career. And um, yeah, that's basically the end of the story. Um, the Starbucks murders. And I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is my first video. I'm a little stuttery, so forgive me for that. Um, but I hope to get better. And I just, if you guys have any questions, any suggestions, any advice, tips, like please let me know. Um, I am open to all of it um, and I hope that you guys enjoy this video.